tell me something more annoying than your sibling being better than you at something. Yup, nothing. So you can understand how upset Kia must have been when the sales sheet came into the office. Cause you see, there's only one car in the mid-size SUV market that outsells the Seltos. And it is none other than the car it is based on. Yep, that's right. The best seller in this segment by a big margin is in fact this, the Hyundai Creta. And with reason. How can the first copy be better than the original? I thought you said you weren't going to intervene today. Today was my day and I'm here to tell the folks how they should be buying the Kia instead of that bland thing over there. What? No, you have it all wrong. This sells more because it's a comfortable car. This isn't bland. This is soft and swift like a koi fish. Talking about fish, looks like Hyundai put the face of one as your front grill. And the only thing that's soft and swift out there is you. Sounds like someone butthurt about something. <laughs> or was it the back seat in the cell toss, am I right? Okay, I'm done with this convo, I'm just going to go away from you now and to tell them how much better this car is to handle than the Creta. Off the back, the Seltos is the more sportier variant out of the Creta and the Seltos. The steering feels a little bit more weighted, the suspension is a little bit more stiffer. I don't know if this is placebo or not, but it surely feels that the Seltos is tuned a little bit more for a sportier driving style. And that indirectly means that the Seltos has been targeted for a younger audience, whereas some would say that the Creta is for an older gentleman as well. But weirdly, Kia has missed out on a few opportunities when it comes to making the Seltos more sportier. For example, I have this beautiful steering wheel, since this is a GT Line variant, I have the red stitching and I have this flat bottom steering wheel as well. But the Creta gets paddle shifters and the Seltos does not get them. I don't know why they've done that. Personally, and I feel that this is a very subjective thing, I feel that the uh, Creta has a better looking central dashboard, whereas I'm not a big fan of this dual uh, display setup that Kia has been running, which has been inspired by Mercedes, but everyone to their own, I mean, that's just a personal opinion. Although I think that the digital instrument cluster that Kia has given is a little bit nicer looking compared to the Cretas. Compared to the Seltos, the Creta is a just more relaxed car. It's not as aggressive, the suspension's quite plush, the rear seats are a bit more inclined for more comfort and basically this car is a bit less young and it's a bit for the more relaxed. It's not a car that will make you feel like wanting to drive the car, it's more like getting to the spot. Which, if you are that kind of a person, this car is for you. I am this kind of a person, which is why I think that the Creta is a much better option than the Seltos. The Seltos is quite harsh. The suspension's on the stiffer side. You need to put quite a lot of effort to steer. The seats in the rear are not that comfortable. So it's very understandable that a car like this sells more than the Seltos. Don't you think so? As for the design, the cleaner layout is in the Creta with its slightly more ergonomic 10.25 inch uh, touchscreen in front. It sits quite flush with the dashboard which makes it easier to look at and continue looking at the road. You are greeted with quite good quality plastics everywhere but in some crucial spots like the top of the dash and the door cards, you are greeted with some low rent plastic which can be a deal breaker for some. The Greta has a funky looking gauge cluster as well with a center digital unit that displays your speedometer and trip data while on the left you have the tachometer and on the right you have your fuel gauge and engine heat gauge. Looks pretty funky but I have to admit the Kia Seltos's one looks just that tiny bit more premium. The central screen is decent to use with good animations and smooth functions. You have some gimmicks in the console like your air purifier rate and stuff but most people are going to connect to it via CarPlay or Android Auto so yeah, works well in that sense. This is where the Creta really shines. With softer cushioning and a reclined backseat angle, 
the Creta is a really nice place in the back seat. Not only do I have the same amount of space as the Seltos and more thigh support, I also have a panoramic sunroof, which I can enjoy the beautiful sky in, which you cannot do in the Seltos. <laughs> The Seltos' interior is for sure the more sportier one because this is a GT line variant and uh, it gets these amazing seats which are ventilated as well. You have the GT line logo embossed in it and this red stitching running through the whole seat. You get the red stitching on the door cards as well as well as the steering wheel and the gear shifter. So overall this looks very very sporty and aggressive. And since I mean this is targeted towards the youthful generation I would say. Uh, everything is black inside whereas in the Creta you get beige or you can get white as well but this is not the case with the Kia and it looks very very nice uh, you get this dual digital display like I said not a big fan of it but it works fairly well the UI inside the infotainment system is pretty smooth not the smoothest I would say but it works pretty well you get a Bose surround sound system in it you get this air purifier inside as well which keeps the air nice and clean and overall this is a decent interior I would say uh, the build quality is average not the best in the business but it works really well and just like Kia and Hyundai are known for shoving in tons and tons of features in their car this is exactly the same and it's just a feature overload like Bhavneet said the Creta is a bit more laid back and a little bit more chiller in the back seat because of its reclined seating angle whereas in the Seltos I mean it you can definitely feel that you're sitting a bit more upright and Kia has missed out on another great opportunity just like the pile shifters not being on the steering wheel you do not get the option for a panoramic sunroof in this car so it does feel a little bit more cramped and claustrophobic in the back but it's nothing that I would complain about of course but the addition of a panoramic sunroof in the Seltos would have been absolutely amazing but I mean of course how many features can Kia put in their car uh, overall I would say the back seats are decently comfortable a bit upright like I said enough amount of headroom no problem at all and you get a decent amount of features uh, behind as well of course the Bose surround sound speakers the air purifier is in the back as well you get a charging socket over here with AC vents uh, and a central armrest as well with cup holders so yeah pretty decent but I would really really like a panoramic sunroof and one more cool little feature blinds now I'm not a big fan of Korean design philosophy and the Seltos and the Creta is no different for me. I think they are just overly designed. There are too many elements all around the car and they look more something like you would find in a Hot Wheels box rather than a proper proper car in the real world. Although the Seltos has a bit more premiumness inside the design and since this is a GT line variant you get these red accents all around the car. Uh, this black paint makes it look very menacing and uh, it gets this knurled uh, kind of effect on the grille which makes it look a little bit more premium than the Creta. When it comes to the wheels, I think so the wheels of the Creta are a little bit better looking. Uh, the, these uh, GT line wheels that the Seltos gets, I'm not a big fan of. Overall, I think so the Creta is a bit more luxury spec looking if you know what I mean and this is the more sportier variant uh, it totally does look more sportier uh, especially in this back black paint and these red accents uh, the Creta is a little bit more laid back and chill both of these cars when it comes to the regular person buying these cars I don't think it will have any sort of problem with the design but since I'm a through and through car enthusiast they're not something that I would uh, really be intrigued to buy when it comes to the looks, the Creta is a subjective matter. People started talking about the headlights and how controversial the DRL on top of the headlight looked and how it just looked like a second thought job. But in my opinion, it looks quite nice. The This car especially in black and with these diamond cut alloy wheels look really nice. And in my opinion, that C-pillar two-tone silver looks really good as well. But if you are not the kind of person that likes the, the Seltos, this is actually quite subtle and quite nice. Now to all of the people who think that these cars are actual real SUVs, this clip shows the maximum amount of off-road both of these cars can take. So what is the conclusion for us? In our opinion, the Seltos is the more enthusiastic model of the two, with its funky design and more youthful personality. If you're in your early 20s or late 20s and looking for a crossover, first of all, why are you buying a crossover? Get something 
actually nice like a sedan or a hatchback and if you're looking to buy any one of these two crossovers the Seltos is the one that you'll be more attracted towards. The Creta on the other hand is the more mundane approach with stuff that we have already seen from Hyundai. So it is the one that appeals to probably the older generation. Our advice to anyone buying both of these cars is don't get a crossover, get a sedan or a hatchback. Something that is actually useful. Crossovers are just a way for manufacturers to extract extra money from your pocket for fake marketing practices like calling it an SUV and putting in some really useless off-road modes. So break the trend and get yourself something nice. McRae on the inside, going to take it. And Senna sprints away, Senna is trying to 